Welcome to the Global Foundries Analog Mixed Signal Solution Seminar. My name is Sean O'Kane from ChipEstimate.com. Today we're pleased to introduce our speaker, Richard Trehi, PhD and Director of Design Methodology at Global Foundries. Richard will provide details of their analog mixed signal solutions at the 28 nanometer process node. At Global Foundries, he is responsible for the development of design flow solutions for foundry processes. He and his team partner with EDA vendors to develop optimized solutions for designers working on digital implementation, analog mixed signal, RF, and 3D IC designs with Global Foundries process nodes. Richard has 20 years of experience in the semiconductor and EDA industry. He holds bachelor's and master's degrees in electrical engineering from University College Cork, Ireland, and a PhD in electrical and computer engineering from Carnegie Mellon University. This will be roughly a 30-minute seminar with a 5 to 10-minute Q&A. You can also search for the Global Foundry's IP catalog by simply going to chipestimate.com. So without any further ado, here is Richard Trahey. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today I'm going to introduce the Global Foundry's collateral and reference flow for analog mixed signal design in our 28 nanometer design processes. Uh, this reference flow was developed with a, a various EDA partners. So the agenda today, I'm going to start with a short introduction to the flow itself and its contents. And next, I will step through each of the flow modules um, and to give you a flavor of what's covered in each module, the, the steps and topics discussed and described. And then finally, we'll conclude with some results on, uh, you know, from silicon validation of the final chip and flow. So, you know, I'd like to start with, you know, just discussing the, the reference flow itself. You know, what, why, why does a foundry like Global Foundries develop reference flows? And there's really three goals here. I mean, the first one is to, to QA the, the collateral that we're providing the customer. We want to make sure that the EDA tools with our process design kit and the third party IP work seamlessly together when we're delivered deliver to the customer. The other second goal is, is a vehicle for us to deliver methodology, design guidelines and recommendations to the customer. Uh, and these are packaged up for easy customer adoption. Uh, for example, in the case of 28 nanometer, one of the effects that I will discuss a little later is layout dependent effects. Uh, that these introduce uh, different considerations during design and we have in our flow captured how best to handle these at various steps in the design. And then finally, uh, we consider this a production flow. It contains all of the steps, you know, all of the things that need to be performed by the customer before they tape out the chip to global foundries. Um, and, and this is our way of, of communicating this information uh, to the designer. The, the flow itself consists of multiple uh, modules. Each is independent, uh, so the user has the flexibility to go through specific interested topics. Um, each module provides step-by-step -step instruction and all the setup files. The, the flow itself is demonstrated on a reference design uh, that consists of a phase lock loop uh, and some digital control logic. And the reference flow is built on Cadence Virtuoso and Encounter platforms, but also integrates best-in-class tools uh, from other EDA vendors, uh, Synopsys, Cadence, Mentor. I, I will, I'll mention these as we go through, um, through, through the steps. Um, when, when the flow is downloaded by the customer, not only do you get this complete executable flow and all the documentation, but we also provide the design database uh, the complete design database, which has actually been silicon validated, and the IP itself. You can download the standard cell libraries and I.O. cells, detailed documentation, and then foundry white papers that describe various um, design methodologies and recommendations. Uh, I'd also highlight that this flow is supported directly by Global Foundries and available from download from Global Foundries. Before I get in to discuss each of the flow modules, um, I just would highlight the, the breadth of EDA support that we have for 28 nanometer design. Um, so we partner with various EDA vendors to certify their tools with our process. And the list of tools and vendors continues to grow. But this slide shows a snapshot of key vendors and tools that are supported today. 
And you can see we have broad support from all the, the major vendors, um, as well as you know, uh, specialty tools such as inductor synthesis, statistical simulation, and uh, electromigration IR drop. So next, I'm going to go through each of the flow modules and give a little bit of a flavor of what's covered in each one. And as I said earlier, each module can be taken up independently uh, and run through. The, the entire flow doesn't have to be, you don't have to go through the entire flow to, to, to leverage it. So the first module is functional design. And in functional design, what we're talking about is schematic level design and simulation. And here what the flow demonstrates on our phase lock loop is the, the global foundries methodology and device models. So what we're highlighting here uh, in particular is corner and Monte Carlo simulation. And we demonstrate how to, how to perform these simulations in the ADE environment. The flow also covers um, typical analog design methodologies such as functional verification using behavioral models and design optimization using sensitivity analysis and parameter optimization. Uh, these two are largely independent of the foundry. But then we, we also cover um, the foundry reliability simulation where we account for hot carry injection and negative bias temperature instability and the global foundries models that supports this. And in fact, in the design, we run this analysis on the VCO and, and demonstrate the impact of reliability you know, over, over 10, years, uh, 10 years on the VCO. Um, at the lower nodes, I mean, what we're seeing is the process variation increases as dimension shrinks. Um, and additional verification can be required in order to minimize this performance variation, uh, at least compared to what you may have done on uh, older nodes. And in the, in the module, what we do is, again, using this design, this phase lock loop, we introduce the corners that are supported uh, across our entire process window and make recommendations as to which, not just process corners, but also design corners to use when validating the IP. And we show how these process corners are managed in Cadence Virtuoso and uh, show the results against our uh, phase lock loop in an analog block level design. One of the examples I'd highlight here with our, our corners is that Global Foundry supports local only Monte Carlo simulation. Um, what this means is that uh, when you look at, the, uh, at the, the distribution of the model, we have a model called SSG, FFG, etc., that have the local variation effect turned off. And at this corner, you can provide, you can perform a Monte Carlo simulation that, um, you, at that corner that has the effect of speeding up overall statistical simulation. Uh, and, and this is demonstrated on the design in, in the reference flow. The next module I'll talk about is uh, inductor synthesis. Um, the design itself contains an inductor, and what we demonstrate here is synthesizing that inductor to meet specific electrical specifications required for the design. Um, we generate a DRC and DFM clean uh, P cell that is then placed in the design. In addition, we use um, the, the vendor tools to, to perform electromagnetic simulation on the design to validate the accuracy. And here, what we're doing is making sure that the critical interconnect, as well as metal fill, uh, are accounted for in the electromagnetic simulation. Um, we support Lorentz uh, Solutions, Helic, and Integrand software. Um, and it, you know, it's important, one thing I would highlight here, that one of the challenges that is covered in the flow is it's compatible with our LVS and parasitic extraction flows. In addition, we support metal filling, slotting, and shielding. And this is all accounted for in the module. Next, we come to custom layout. Um, and here, what, we, what, we, what we're striving to do is introduce Global Foundry's P-cells um, and demonstrate how to use those P-cells in, 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 uh, in the custom layout environment. So we start by generating um, connectivity-driven layout, uh, demonstrating sch schematic and layout cross-probing uh, using Global Foundry's P-cells. We also demonstrate performing constraint-driven layout uh, in the design. And there's two kinds of constraints we're considering here. There's process constraints and placement constraints. The placement constraints being those that the analog designer chooses to impose 
him, him or herself. But the process constraints are the constraints that come from the foundry. And we also demonstrate how in Virtuoso these constraints can be used during layout. Um, one of the constraints, for example, that is uh, new in 28 nanometer is dummy transistors, uh, which are something inserted to manage the stress. And I'll speak a little bit more about stress, uh, stress liner when, when further on. You know, in addition to uh, constraint-driven layout, the flow also demonstrates using global foundries, tech files for point-to-point -point routing and guided routing. Okay, so, so far everything I've covered has been around uh, analog block level design. But this is an analog mixed signal flow. And, and in, that, in that capacity, we have also integrated, the, the, or the top level of design is integrated using uh, Cadence and Counter Platform. Um, and in this module, we are actually covering two things. Firstly, there's the top level assembly of all the IPs. Um, and here what we do is we demonstrate the placement of the blocks, uh, placement of pad cells and filler cells. Um, the design, ultimately this, de this design is fabricated. So we also, have to, we also put in I.O. cells and, the, and this module demonstrates the placement of I.O. cells. Besides this top level assembly, we also cover the, um, the, the, the digital implementation. And this is, this, the design is really a classic um, design for use with the big A, small d environment. And here we do have a digital on top mix signal design flow, and we demonstrate the steps such as floor planning, uh, um, you know, pre-route of analog signals using non-default routing, clock tree synthesis, etc. And all of these steps are demonstrated in this module. I should also add that Global Foundries also supports uh, specific digital implementation flows that go into greater depth for pure RTL to GDS2 design. But in this case, we're trying to focus on the big A, small d designer and, and the steps required for that. So the next module is post layout design validation and arguably one of the most important modules um, based, based on what we've seen uh, from customer adoption. So in this module, what we're addressing is, you know, after the layout is complete and now you, you want to extract the final netlist and get the most accurate representation of how the chip is performing. So in this module, we start with the transistor level GDS2 of our reference design. It supports uh, Caliber LVS integrated with the Parsig extraction engines from Synopsys, Cadence, and Mentor. And for each of these tools, we support generating an OA extracted view for use in a analog design environment, as well as a DSPF netlist. The flow also demonstrates you know, running parasitic extraction with various modes, which is necessary at different stages in the design. So for example, resistance only extraction, capacitance only extraction, uh, RC, and even no parasitics. And we also discuss and introduce the parasitic corners and demonstrate extraction at these different corners. Uh, earlier in the, in the presentation, I talked about layout dependent effects uh, such as shallow trench isolation, well proximity effect, and stress. And these are all accounted for in the PEX flow also. It demonstrates um, extracting, extracting the geometry parameters and then evaluating the stress. So the PEX reference flow initially focuses on things like variability and corner extraction. So we begin by describing and demonstrating the impact of device and interconnect parasitics on the design. Um, all of the corners are defined and explained in detail, and how to perform corner extraction is also shown with examples. The flow also focuses on using the extracted view generation for easier simulation in analog design environment. And we also account for metal fill here in this flow. Uh, a key point I want to make here is that this is a self-executable flow. And where we've seen uh, tremendous value here is that this serves as a reference to the customer to prove the correctness of your installed PDK and your installed setup. So what we're giving you here is, you know, with the PDK, with the scripts, and with the example, we also give you the answers, the results that we expect to see when we run that. So when you install this in your environment, and as anyone who's run some of these tools knows there's a, a, a plethora of switches, you know, we, we're defining for you what switches to set, and we're, and we're giving you what, what answer we at the foundry expect to see. 
So you, can, uh, you should be able to mimic this at your environment. So let me describe a little bit about what layout-dependent effects are. Um, I mean, most people are familiar with uh, shallow trench isolation, uh, well proximity effects. But at 28, what's become particularly uh, challenging is the stress liner that's, that's been introduced to enhance channel mobility. Uh, I mean, this is, this is a good thing. It gives us um, you know, better transistor performance. But the, the challenge with layout dependent effects is that the behavior of the transistor uh, you know, is dependent on how it's laid out or its proximity, if you'd like, to other transistors and other, other structures on, on the silicon. And what we have to be able to do is to measure that impact and capture it in our simulations. And there's a few things I want to highlight here. Um, so I, I mentioned the sources of, of the well proximity effects. But more particularly, I want to talk about how Global Foundries addresses this. Um, so we take a unique solution in that the, the layout dependent parameters, they will modulate the base model. But what we don't do is we don't hide that inside the model. So we have a separate um, step that actually extracts the geometry parameters, and from those geometry parameters, changes specific transistor uh, model parameters. In fact, it, what it adjusts is the threshold voltage and the mobility modifier. And this is transparent to the user. And, and the reason I, I highlight this is analog designers are always looking to understand um, you know, how the model works uh, to gain intuition as they do design. And in this case, because of the transparency of our implementation, you know, you're seeing a consistent model between pre and post layout. Um, the other benefit is because the model is evaluated outside of the circuit simulator, um, it, it avoids the overhead in simulation of evaluating all these geometry parameters and sort of in an under the hood mode modifying the behavior of the transistor. So with the Global Foundries uh, approach, what you get is two parameters. You can see those parameters and you, you, you should be able to gain some intuition as to, uh, how to how to control them in your design. The other thing that I think is a very important to highlight uh, so anyone who's done analog design understands that one of the challenges is that you want to reduce the number of iterations when you go from schematic level design to post layout design, uh, post layout simulation. I mean, people have seen this in older nodes already where the, the typical issue is uh, parasitics. So when you, when you simulate a schematic level design, to first order it's not going to have any uh, measure of the parasitics between the devices. And then when you finally get the layout and you extract it, the, you know, the behavior is going to be different because of the R's and C's. We, well, now we have the same issue with layout dependent effects. And one of the things in this flow that we've um, emphasized is a methodology for the designer at the schematic level to predict the impact of layout dependent effects on his design. And this is there as a, as a means to reduce the number of iterations. So let me sort of expand on this a little bit more. Um, so so we, we've talked about, we've described what causes the layout dependent effects. I, I've described the, the, um, the model that Global Foundries use for extracting the stress, but now let me talk about where it's used. Um, and there's three places where you need to be able to estimate stress. So the, the most obvious is at the very end of the design, right when we get to the point where we want the most accurate netlist for how our design is going to behave sign off LVS and parasitic extraction. So this is demonstrated in the reference flow. Uh, we demonstrate how all the geometry parameters are extracted. We run this, this uh, stress evaluator that I mentioned earlier. It generates the threshold uh, voltage modifier and the mobility modifier, and that gets inserted into the final netlist. The second place where it's useful to be able to get an insight into the impact of LDE is during layout. So here the layout engineer you know, as he's laying out the transistors, you know, may want during, during the layout process to get a, a measure of what impact a particular choice is going to have on the transistor. And he also can check against constraints specified by the circuit designer. And then the third one, um, which, is, which is important to reduce design iterations, is a schematic based layout dependent effect estimation. And this is, is uh, demonstrated in the Global Foundries flow and shows how this can be used to estimate the impact of LDE uh, before we even do any layout. 
Um, so this slide shows a little bit more detail how this is performed. Um, there's, there's sort of two paths on the left here. The first starts on the right with the layout GDS, goes through LVS extraction, extracts the complete geometry parameters. So that's the golden, uh, the golden extraction. And then evaluates the stress, VTH, and mu zero modifiers, and augments the transistor model parameters um, in, in the netlist. The second one on the left is, is at the schematic level. And here we rely on Global Foundry's P cells. We extract a subset of the geometry parameters to estimate the stress. And again, it uses the same flow. It is an approximation, um, but we have seen consistent results between pre and post layout on our calculations. This flow integrates with Cadence Virtuoso and LEA for layout analysis. Okay. The, uh, the, the, the final module in the reference flow is uh, sign off for manufacturing. And as the graph on the right shows, um, the number of DRC rules and the complexity of DRC rules continues to, to grow exponentially as we, as we shrink the nodes. And so it's, it's important that we provide methodologies to help the designer debug their, their, uh, their designs early in the, as early as possible in the design process. So this flow demonstrates a CDL and GDS file generation, the LVS and DRC checks, we walk through those. It also demonstrates Global Foundry's DFM methodology using DRC plus pattern-based checks as well as lithography simulation. Uh, the Global Foundry's custom fill flow is also demonstrated uh, in the design stage to use hierarchical fill. Uh, we show how to evaluate the fill impact on the block level and also methodologies to, uh, to ensure the density requirement on the block level. Um, this is all demonstrated in the flow and, and, and we deliver these with, with scripts and, uh, and examples. The flow also incorporates uh, electron migration and IR drop as well as a DRC auto waiver flow. So the module itself um, is based, it is built on uh, Mentor Calibers DRC LVS uh, tools, and they operate on the same reference design that we've been discussing so far. And what we provide here is a step-by-step -step instruction guide to, to guide the designer through the use of these DRC and LVS modules. And I think what's even more important that I want to highlight is that the scripts are parameterized to provide examples. So you can see, you know, which settings to use for, let's say, block level DRC verification versus chip level DRC. So these are all provided and documented, uh, fully parameterized and available to be reused in, in, in your own design. Um, flat and hierarchical flows are also supported and the flow demonstrates uh, Calibre Interactive. I mentioned earlier that, the, you know, as we see it, these advanced DRC rules are, are difficult to understand and debug, and the flow demonstrates the integration of Calibre RVE with Virtuoso as a, as a means to debug uh, DRC issues uh, proactively in the design. And this is shown working with the GFPDK. Let me talk a little bit about the Global Foundry's DFM flow. Um, so, Global Foundry supports uh, this technology DRC Plus uh, for full chip physical verification. And th th where we use this is to flag those shapes in the design that are suboptimal. So these are not um, shapes that are, that are DRC violations. What they are is shapes that we in the foundry have observed um, can lead to substandard yield. So as we get each, the, the way this works for us is as, as each customer tapes out their design, uh, we, we, you know, we manufacture those designs, we analyze the results, and we are constantly analyzing the layouts to um, identify those shapes and structures that we see yield issues with. Uh, and, we, and we call these structures yield detractors. And so we are constantly um, fine tuning um, and updating this library of yield attractors that identifies shapes that, that we know are, are not optimal. And so the way this flow works is, you know, you, you run this design on your layout and it will flag those two-dimensional shapes using a technology called pattern matching. This is orders of magnitude faster than, than, than a, a regular DRC. And this DRC plus flow is integrated into the reference flow. 
Um, it's set up in such a way that the designer can use this early in the layout to avoid uh, having to do late fixes. Um, and the way it works is the Global Foundry's certified library of yield attractors is installed um, under, under, under the database. Um, DRC Plus is built into Virtuoso and this is invoked from the Virtuoso uh, layout suite. And then the designer will select the layout region on which he wants to perform the DRC Plus uh, verification. Uh, he executes the DRC Plus and this will flag any litho unfriendly patterns. And then the, the designer has a couple of choices. Uh, he can either go in and manually fix it or also Virtuoso supports an auto-fixing uh, capability in, in, in Virtuoso. Again, this, this is demonstrated by example and documented in the reference flow. I also mentioned um, that in this sign-off for manufacturing, we have Apache totem support for IR, uh, drop, as well as electrum mig migration. Um, this flow supports uh, static and dynamic IR drop as well as electron migration analysis and also supports signal, signal net analysis. Um, and the key point I would emphasize again is that all of the setup files and parameterized scripts for a caliber based totem flow are delivered as part of this reference flow. So this sh slide um, shows the, the steps that are supported in the flow. So the exact post layout netlist, including stress parameters, for back, are back annotated to the netlist. Um, the correct currents for all devices, even transistor fingers, uh, are documented. So you can use your own SPICE or FASTBOSS simulator and make sure that you're matching the results that, that, that we expect you to see using our golden models. Uh, device accurate back annotation of transient currents is performed and electromigration risk calculation uh, is also demonstrated in the flow. The key point to make here is that all of the steps in order to uh, execute TOTEM using Global Foundry's PDK on this reference design is documented and demonstrated in these scripts. And the reason this is important is that this reference flow helps you to set up your flow on your own site um, and use our examples and our documentation to make sure you're matching the results that the Foundry expects you to see. So there I've covered all of the modules at a fairly high level. Each of these comes with detailed documentation, uh, which is available for download. Um, I'll sort of conclude here by talking a little bit about the chip itself. Uh, so as I said earlier, this design was manufactured um, and we, had, we worked with our partners, Open Silicon, who took the silicon, uh, they packaged it in a, in a chip. They also built a test board for this and, and did a test plan. And, and once it came back from the, found, uh, the foundry in early 2012, um, they, they did all the measurements. Um, and what this slide shows is just a, a brief summary of some of the measurements they performed. Um, the, the column on the left is the parameters that we were looking at. Uh, the middle column is, is the spec or the simulation results that we expected. And then on the right is the silicon measurements. The, you'll notice that the measurements uh, for the output clock frequency are really good, but that's to be expected because it's a phase lock loop. I mean, the whole purpose of a phase lock loop is to, is to lock onto the frequency. But even if you look at things like um, total peak-to-peak -peak, uh, jitter, um, we still were, were very close or under spec um, uh, with, with this design. And I think the, the point that I would make here is that this reference flow was developed in a, in a unique way. <clears throat> what we set out to do was to design a chip and, but then all the work that was done in the process of designing that chip is what creates the reference flow. You know, it's, it wasn't the reference, the re, we didn't start with the reference flow, we started with the design. So, that, so that all this, the decisions and choices that the designers made are captured in the documentation and, and, and demonstrated by example. So in conclusion, um, so this 28 nanometer design flow is available for download uh, from Global Foundries. It's a set of individual flow modules um, that are demonstrated on this reference design. Each module contains step-by-step -step instructions as well as all the setup database files. Um, and you can download uh, the design database and IP, the standard cell libraries which are used in the digital implementation piece and IO cells, um, the all, detailed documentation, 
as well as uh, foundry white papers that cover specific topics um, such as layout dependent effects. Um, these are all available for download from Global Foundries. So that concludes my talk. Thank you. Uh, Richard, we do have a few questions from our audience. The first one is, what is the frequency range of the PLL? Okay, well, <clears throat> the design itself, it's a three gigahertz PLL. Um, it has a digital control logic, and it really is sort of a classic, I think I said this earlier, a classic big A, small d design. So it uses uh, direct digital synthesis, um, and, the, and the PLL itself uh, has an input frequency that ranges from 5 megahertz to 100 megahertz, while the output goes from uh, 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. Um, the, the VCO is a ring oscillator based VCO. Um, it has a tri-state phase frequency detector that has supports lock detection. And as I said earlier, there's also an inductor uh, in this design. Um, that the, and all of that is available for download uh, as part of the reference design. Okay, we have another question. You had uh, mentioned a GUI for uh, layout dependent effects during schematic design. So the question is, who supports this and does it handle multi-finger devices? Okay, that's a great question. Um, this, this is a, a global foundries utility um, and it's distributed in our uh, LDE flow in the reference flow. And so what it does is it takes as input the virtuoso schematic and then this utility calculates the stress parameters based on the p-cells of the instances in that schematic. And yes, multi-finger devices are handled, um, and the stress parameters are then displayed in the GUI. So I mentioned in the presentation that we have uh, threshold voltage and mobility modifiers for the stress. So those parameters are displayed in the GUI, and the designer can actually look at those in the GUI and, and review them before he accepts them and, and saves them to the schematic. Okay, one, another question. Um, your flow uh, describes creation of a complete chip. The question is, do you cover the steps uh, required to prepare a piece of IP for inclusion in another design? Uh, yes, actually. That, that's something that we didn't uh, cover in the presentation, but there is, there is another module in the, de in the design called, uh, we call it AMS block packaging. And the, and the phase lock loop here is actually intended to be used as an IP and SOC designs. So we do demonstrate, we do actually treat that as a piece of IP. And in this block, we demonstrate uh, all of the steps, such as creating a dot lib timing model for the phase lock loop, um, creation of a Verilog A behavioral model, and, all, and Verilog uh, behavioral model too, and also creating uh, abstract and left physical views. Uh, so, so, the, so, you know, we do, we do allow for the assumption that the designer will want to create IP, and that's, that's demonstrated here. One last question. Uh, do you document somewhere the supported devices, options, et cetera, et cetera for P-cells? Uh, yes, actually. In, in the custom layout module, uh, we, we also distribute detailed uh, guidelines for Global Foundry's P-cells. And what this does is it gives an introduction to all of the supported devices, voltages, and process options. Um, and then it also lists the devices and P-cell features for things like MOSFET devices, uh, resistors, capacitors. Um, some of the more obscure ones like a crack cell, P-cell are discussed and described. Um, and then the list of LVS parameters and corresponding uh, LVS switch settings are also described for the transistors and parasitic devices. Well, thank you, Richard. Uh, I, I do want to let our audience know that all other questions will be answered offline. So um, that said, I want to thank Richard Trahey and Global Foundries for the Analog Mixed Signal Solution Seminar. Thank you, Richard. Thank you.